determining the specific heat capacity of a substance. I've decided to illustrate this with a past paper question from 2014. It's a six marker past paper question. Okay, so let's have a read through the question. You provide it with a small bottle of cooking oil and some standard physics uh, lab equipment with the help of a label diagram. So we're gonna make sure that we both draw a diagram and also label it. Describe an electrical experiment to determine the specific heat capacity of the oil. Okay, so that's one thing that we need to do. After we've done that, we need to state two sources of uncertainty in our measurements and discuss how those could be reduced okay so we have quite a lot of work to do now just before we get started this will be a perfect time for you guys to pause this video and attempt this question fully independently before we have a look at the solution okay no seriously you need to pause this video Okay guys, so let's have a look at the labeled diagram first of all. Now it's time to look at the solution of this problem. First of all, let's have a look at the diagram that I pre-drawn over here. Notice that we have a insulated container. So just over here we have an insulated container and we've actually immersed the liquid, in this case that's some um, cooking oil in there. We have a heater and uh, I just want to draw your attention to the fact that the heater is fully immersed. So if part of the heater was sticking out of the water then we're going to be losing a large amount of energy. So we need to make sure that it's fully immersed. We're going to have a thermometer because we're going to be measuring the change in temperature in that liquid. And uh, we also have an ammeter and a voltmeter connected to the electrical circuit. Above that, uh, we'll be able to measure the current and the voltage. Once we have those, we're going to be able to work out the power because uh, just as an aside over here, power is simply current times voltage. So we're going to be able to work out our input power. But just to keep things simple and just recap the diagram once, once more, we've got a power supply up here that's connected to an ammeter, and, um, which is then connected to an electrical heater, which is immersed into the liquid. The idea here is that the heater uh, essentially heats up the liquid, and we're going to be able to measure the temperature change. Once we know that temperature change, we should be able to work out the uh, energy has gone in and from there the specific heat capacity of the liquid. There's quite a lot of, um, quite a lot of components in this circuit so um, it's worth practicing this um, and making sure that you've connected all the elements correctly. Little points where um, we really need to make sure that we're careful. The ammeter needs to be in series. So if you've drawn, you know, the ammeter and the voltmeter in uh, correctly, so ammeter is in series, voltmeter is in parallel, you can give yourself a mark for that for sure. Um, okay, so let's have a look at the actual theory behind this question. What we're going to start off with is just a general equation so that we know what we're doing with, uh, with, with this experiment. Now our input energy, E, is power times time. If you're wondering where I got this, remember that in general power is uh, the amount of energy per unit time. So just rearranging for E, we get that energy is power times time. Now we, what we've studied before is that the energy that has been inputted, that this is actually our change in energy uh, from the initial state of the substance before heating up. So we can just say that this is equal to mc delta theta, where delta theta is our change in energy, m is the mass of the substance, and c is the specific heat capacity. That's going to equal to power times time. Well, if we remember, power is just voltage times current from our GCSEs and we're going to need to multiply this by time. Perfect. Now I'm just going to underline over here with my galaxy pen 
everything that we're going to be measuring. So in order to work out the specific heat capacity, I'm definitely going to need to measure my um, change in temperature, delta theta, so I was going to need measuring, uh, voltage and current are going to need measuring as well. We're also going to measure a fixed amount of time using a stopwatch. Finally, we're also going to measure the mass of the um, mass of the cooking oil with a top pan balance. So let's start with the description of this experiment. The first thing we'll need to do is essentially switch on the circuit for a fixed amount of time. So what I'm going to just write over here is to Oops, I'm writing still in my Galaxy pen. Let's change that to a normal pen. So switch on the circuit for a fixed time. For a fixed for a fixed time. Now the next thing we're gonna need is a list of measurements with the actual instrument that we're going to be using to do those measurements. Uh, we want to be as concise as possible because we don't want to waste too much time or don't waste any time in an exam situation. So let me just write down measurements. Perfect. Now in terms of our measurements the first thing we need to do is to measure the mass of the oil so uh, i'm just going to bullet point these i'm going to say mass of the oil with a top pan balance remember the standard way is to measure the mass of the container without the oil without the oil um, inside then set the top and balance uh, to to zero and then add in the oil and this should give us the uh, the mass of the oil itself um, additionally we're also going to measure the change of temperature for this for this fixed uh, amount of time so uh, measure the change in temperature with the thermometer so change in temperature with a thermometer very often in the mark schemes um, we can see that they're asking us to not only introduce our measurements but what we're going to be measuring those precisely and this is really really important so what we need to measure next is the just the time interval we're going to use a stop clock for this so we can just say that we need to well we need to add to our list of measurements the time interval the fixed time interval and uh, we're going to do that with a stop clock finally we just need to add in our electrical measurements so um, we're going to measure our current with an ammeter our voltage with the voltmeter so with a voltmeter and uh, there we have it these are all of our measurements once again mass change of temperature time current and voltage if we look at the above equation we can actually rearrange this uh, equation over here i'm gonna put this i'm gonna circle this we can rearrange this equation for C because we'll have measured everything else. Okay, well, um, let's include that in a different section, which uh, I'm just going to say is analysis or calculation. Uh, let's just say that this is a uh, calculation. So, um, for our calculations, what we need to do is rearrange the above equation for C. So I'm going to do that quite carefully. So um, C is equal to V times I times T. 
and we're gonna divide this by m delta theta. So now we have a method on calculating the specific heat capacity of the cooking oil. What we also need to do is to provide two sources of uncertainties in this experiment and discuss how could those be potentially reduced. So I'm going to write one more final section in here and I'm going to call that uncertainties. The first one that I would like to discuss is that the temperature can vary throughout the cooking oil. So uh, we can just say that the temperature can vary throughout the, throughout the cooking oil. A very easy way of fixing this or minimizing this error would be to stir the oil continuously throughout the experiment. So this is how we can minimize this. So stir the oil continuously throughout the experiment. Okay, and uh, we need to provide one more. An obvious one to look at is that quite a lot of energy is required to raise the temperature of the actual container or the heater and the insulation, etc. So um, we can say is that energy or some energy is required to raise the temperature of the container. And we can allow this in our calculations. So we need to be aware of this limitation of this experiment. Okay, folks, um, if there are any questions on, um, on this six marker, please feel free to drop a comment down below and I shall be more than happy to answer them. Hope you found this video useful.